This is Tojo Live. Welcome to Tojo Live. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it is good to be here with you again for another episode of Tojo Live. We're here to talk about your questions about life, faith, and the church, and uh, of course, take any prayer requests uh, that you might have. We do want to start with a, a Bible verse. This comes from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. It says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. <laughs> In other words, be ready to, to, when somebody says, why do you feel the way you do? Or why do you, why do you talk about this Jesus stuff? Or why are you so happy? Or, you know, in all this stuff, how do you not handle, why, why do you handle stress so differently than everybody else? Be ready to give an answer for that. It doesn't mean you have to have all the answers for every question, but just be prepared to give an answer for why you have that hope. What's the reason that you have that hope? And some of the stuff that we talk on this show helps equip us to be able to answer uh, those questions. But then I love that last line that Peter says. He said, but do this with gentleness and respect. Okay, we're not here to win arguments with people. If somebody's asking us something, we can answer them honestly. Um, but if they want to argue with us, okay. I mean, you want to argue about whether the sky is blue or orange? Go ahead. I don't have any interest in that argument. And so... You know, if you want to have a discussion, if you want to talk about things, let's talk about <clears throat> things. But most of the time, there are some exceptions to this, but most of the time, you will never argue somebody into deciding to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, that's not going to happen. Yeah. So, yes, be prepared to give an answer, even if it's an answer that even if they're asking you a question in, in a way that they object to what you said, be prepared to give an answer, but do it with gentleness and respect in that. And then I love this quote from Frank Turek. Frank Turek is an apologist, um, talks about, you know, the science behind the Bible and behind faith and, and, and all of this stuff. And, and I love this quote from him. He's not the only one to say this, but he's the only one to write a book with this title. His quote is, I do not have enough faith to be an atheist. And I love that quote because if you investigate the two side by side, Christianity and atheism, it literally does take more faith to be an atheist than it does to be a Christian. Okay, we've got more support for our belief system than they do for their belief system. So... All right, I'm going to turn it over to my my friend and partner, Joe Cortali. How are you, my friend? Hey, brother. It's good to be here once again on a Wednesday night. You and I chat about this. This is a great time you know, right in the middle of the week to kind of get us over the hump and get us ready for uh, this coming weekend. This coming exciting weekend. You know, obviously Friday's Christmas Eve, and we look forward to our, our service. And I think, Tammy, you told me last year that tomorrow is called Christmas Adam. Christmas Adam. That is right. There you go. I never heard that before, but obviously Adam came before Eve, so tomorrow is Christmas Adam. No, brother, it's, just, it's so good to be here. And you know, it's interesting. You were you were talking about you know the the book where I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. I heard this story once about this uh, Christian and the atheist. They used to get together, you know, every year. To, they had gone to school together. In the last couple of years, they tried to get together. It had rained, and they were going to have a picnic. And then finally, they, they had a nice day, and they were getting together. And they got out in, into the field, and they were under a tree. And the atheist said, I am so thankful. It's such a beautiful day. And the Christian said, thankful to who? Uh. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh, <laughs> man. Good to be here. Good to be here. Awesome. Looks like we got several people on with us. We got Chris Petrella saying hi all. Hey, Chris, good to see you. Sonia is saying hi. Uh, Glen Cove Christian Church. Sonia, good to have you on here. Mary Ann and Vinny are on here. Uh, blessed Christmas to all. Blessed Christmas to you, 
Um, and um, we're looking forward to Christmas. I always look forward to Christmas. It's a great time for me. I shared that a little bit of that with you guys on Sunday. Uh, Chris Klingen is on here saying, happy Wednesday, dear friends. That's <laughs> awesome. I love it. It's just Wednesday. What is it? Let's call it happy Wednesday. <laughs> Lois Tubby is saying hello, Tojo, uh, <laughs> becoming a little poetic here with this. Um, Lois, uh, give us an update, if you will, on how you're doing. I know you've been dealing with some some health issues here recently, and um, give us an update. I hope I hope you are feeling better. Um, Margie is saying Christmas and Happy New Year to Merry, all my. Merry Christmas. Sorry. I got oh, Merry, Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year to all my friends. Margie, we are glad that you are here. And Merry Christmas and Happy New Year uh, to you as well. All right. I have a question. What's the question? It's not the trivia question. It's just a <coughs> survey of questions. How many of you snoop at Christmas time? That's my question. How many of you snoop at Christmas time? You want to find out what you're getting. Because I'm just, I've, I've got some stories. Looking in the closets, okay. under the beds. Uh, yeah, exactly, you psycho. At your friend's house. <laughs> Let me just tell y'all, you know, Tommy <clears throat> seems to be such an up and up guy and and just, you know, like would never do anything wrong, right? Um, Let me tell you, you are so wrong. If you think that about him, because this man goes nuts. He's worse than a toddler. I, he shakes things. He snoops in closets. He looks under beds. He looks at packages. He waits at the door when we have a UPS package or another package come, a, a, a delivery service come to the door. He runs to the door in front of me and tries to find it. He is just terrible. Let me just tell you. I think he's, Tammy, I think he's trying to make your job easier, going to the door and getting those packages and you yeah. know, making yeah. sure that those boxes, right. there's nothing broken inside. He rattles them so you don't have to. It's all about love. Listen, there are years that I have put rocks in the bottom of the box so that it would make noises. There, have been, Listen, y'all want to know how far I went on this? One <laughs> year, I took, I took all of the kids' presents and I had a code. All right. And so yeah. all Listen the, to this. This is crazy. This was awesome. It's the only year that you didn't find out all your presents. <clears throat> I would take Apollonia's presents and they I would put Apollonia's name on all of Tommy's presents. And I would put Dylan's name on all of Apollonia's presents and kind of and I had a code where it was all figured out. So when on Sunday morning or Sunday morning, on Christmas morning, they would get up and give all their presents out, and they all had stacks of presents with their names there ready to open. And then I made them all switch stacks, switch places. And that's the only year that they did not figure everything out. That's just me. That's, uh, no, it was perfection. Was I hope you repented. For <laughs> that you're, might keep you out of heaven. You're too snoopy. I'm just saying. You're just too snoopy. <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> sneaky, actually. I don't know about that. Right, Being sneaky. He, he, early, early on in our relationship, Tammy would be surprised when I would pick up a package and I would kind of shake it and put my ear up to it. And then I would say what it was. Because I had seen it several weeks before and she didn't know. And so when I would hold it up, I would be like, oh, this is like one year. It was it was the encyclopedia of college basketball. And I said, I think this is the encyclopedia of college basketball. And her her face just like, what? How did you? Know? <laughs> I like to surprise him. And when the goofball figures them all out. Oh, I was surprised when I found it uh, under your bed. Oh, that's just so cool. <laughs> Just strong. That's great. Chris Pastrella said he has nothing to snoop for, but he used to when he was younger. Yeah, used to when you were younger. Used to when he was younger. And Jesus said, unless we become as little children, oh we will not gosh. even enter the kingdom don't of heaven. Even. Don't even. So I'm, don't just, even. I'm just living up to the teachings hey, of Jesus. Aura just joined. Aura, our question is do you snoop? At Christmas time. Yeah, this is not the question for the. This is not the trivia question. No, this is my question this is because Tammy's I question. have a pet peeve. All right. And Margie said her twin sister does that, but she likes to be surprised. There is nothing worse than ruining your surprise. I no, don't like guessing. Listen, when I find it ahead of time, I'm surprised. Oh, uh, let me let, <laughs> listen, guys. You're talking to the woman who I don't even like watching movie trailers. 
because I don't want it to ruin the storyline for me. I like to be completely blown away. Yeah. So I don't like finding my Some stuff. trailers do give away too much. They do. They do. All right. So we have, oh, look. Aura said she used to snoop when she was 10. 10. Yeah. See, Tom. Aura, embrace your childhood. <laughs> Go back there. Are you telling me? Relive those memories. Oh my gosh. Uh. Snoop. Hey right. Tammy, I oh, see uh, I see the request and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh uh. yeah, Joe, you fixed your microphone. That sounds a lot better. Oh good, <laughs> good. Yeah. Lois says the doctor put me on new meds for the next 10 days. The infection is still not cured. Keep praying the new meds work. Lois, we will definitely yeah. do that. Joe, you mind lifting up Lois in prayer for us? Yeah, Father God, I just want to I want to lift up our sister Lois this evening. Uh, Father, she's been uh, fighting this infection. Her body's been fighting this, and it's uh, it's still not cured. Uh, so we just ask, uh, Father, that these new meds that that she's been prescribed are going to work. We pray that um, that you would she would be comforted, and that uh, all the all the pain, all the discomfort would cease. Father, we love Lois. We pray that you'd watch over and protect her and comfort her. And we pray this in Jesus' powerful and precious name. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Um, Chris Klingon <laughs> says he has a prayer request for his sister-in-law, Lucia. Lucia or Lucia? I'm going to say Lucia. She was admitted to Stony Brook Hospital with COVID. Her oxygen level is very poor and she suffers from myotonic dystrophy and they are very concerned about pneumonia. Mm. Wow. Yeah, we will. Uh, we will definitely do that. Let's pray. Um, dear Father, I just uh, uh, lift up uh, Chris's sister-in-law to you. I pray that you be with be with her. God, God, we pray for healing in her body. She's got some underlying issues, obviously, as you know. And um, and God, we know this could be a, a dangerous situation. And so, God, we just pray for your healing hand in her body at this moment. Dear Father, that you will you will begin that healing process immediately in her body. We just lift her up to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Sonia is watching us. We have quite a few. All right. This All time. right. Was that the only prayer request? I thought there was another one. If there's not, um, I think that's it for now. We had Lois's and Chris Clemens. Everybody else is saying hello. All right. Hey guys. Uh, is something weird happened yesterday. You know, um, one of our, our frequent watchers of this show is uh, Mark Hendricks. And and yesterday, sometime after 6 o'clock yesterday evening, his his Facebook went blank or we don't know. It was it's weird. You can't you can't get on there and find his wall anymore and you're not able to message him or anything. So I don't know if something something's going on. Or if it's just a glitch in the computer, um, but just uh, be in prayer for Mark. We know Mark uh, Hendricks is is still in the process of winning the battle against um, the his smoking addiction, and um, he he has he has been open and transparent with that battle uh, here with us on this show. So we want to continue um, to remember him in our prayers and, and, and pray that this is just like a computer glitch or something, um, where he's, he's seems to have gone off the map. So I may <laughs> follow up with, we've got some common friends in, um, in Kentucky and I may, I may get in touch with some of them and try to, um, see if I can find out what happened. <laughs> so I want to do want to go ahead and pray for him. I would yeah. like yeah, let me. Joe, would you mind praying? For no, I'd, I'd be honored to, Tommy. All right. Uh, Father God, I just want to lift up our brother Mark Hendricks to you this evening. Uh, dear God, he has been diligent in trying to uh, quit smoking, and he's shared with us his challenges. He's also, over the last several months, been a, just a wonderful addition to this uh, broadcast, the simulcast. And the questions he's asked, the comments he's has been an inspiration to me, and I think to many of us. So, dear God, we're not sure what's what's transpired on the computer and with Facebook and and uh, whatever. But we're just going to we're going to lift Mark up and we're going to pray that he is safe and healthy, and that you would keep him out of harm's way. 
Father, we pray that Tommy's able to make contact through him, through a fellow contact. And most importantly, God, we just pray that he is okay and that um, and he's doing well. And we thank you, Father. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Appreciate that, Jeff. Yeah, you thank bet, you. brother. Um, um, I noticed um, Leon. Is it Le Leo? Leo. 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 Um, earlier when we were talking about Frank Turek, he said, um, what was it? Frank Turek is phenomenal. phenomenal. That's the word he used. Phenomenal. phenomenal. Frank Turek is phenomenal. Hey, I would encourage you. You can get some free videos of Frank Turek on YouTube. Um, just just go to YouTube and, and, and put his name in the search and you can get some free stuff. He also has some curriculums and some books. Obviously, he's got one book called... Um, um, I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. He's got a curriculum by the same name. We actually use that curriculum with our kids. As many of you know, we homeschool our kids. And when I mean we, I mean my wife uh, homeschools our kids. <laughs> Although with this curriculum, I'm the one that that led that. And, and we went through it was an 11-session uh, program, I think, of, of just apologetics. And, man, he goes deep. He goes deep with a lot of that stuff. And a lot of it, I, I had to go back and listen to and reread in order to get. And so um, it's, it's really good stuff. And so I would encourage you to, uh, to get on YouTube and, and look him up sometime. I agree with you, Leo. Uh, Frank Turk is phenomenal with, with the information that he provides. Marianne said, prayers, please. We have some family members who have COVID and others who are having tests <coughs> tomorrow because they are feverish. Oh, wow. All right, let's pray. Dear Father, I pray that you uh, be with those uh, family members of, of Marianne and Vinny's that uh, have COVID. Um, God, first of all, we pray for healing in their bodies. We pray that it doesn't get uh, any more severe than it already is, that it already has begun the process of getting better. And God, we pray for uh, the other members of the family that uh, some of them have already started running fevers. God, I pray that it is something else and that it is easily taken care of and healed and they're able to just enjoy Christmas, dear Father. I, I pray that they're able to, to celebrate uh, this Christmas um, season uh, with you and with friends and with family. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, we brother. Had, uh, Lois, Lois, um, <coughs> Secrist, Se Secrist, I'm not sure I was saying that right. That is um, Nanny Pat's sister. Oh, really? So awesome. So good to see yeah, you. Yeah, I knew that. And she lives in... Somewhere not here. <laughs> I don't remember I want to say North Carolina, but I'm not sure that's No, accurate. that's um, that's the sister. That's Margie's sister, twin sister. Okay, so lives she in lives North in North Carolina. Carolina. I think. Y'all get, get me straightened out if I'm not right. Yeah. Or I had a question, a prayer request for her friend Diane and two teens who tested positive for COVID. Hmm. All right. All right. Joe, will you lift up that? Yeah, question? no, I, I, I would. You know, Tommy, even before we say that, I'm our, our honored to pray. Uh, <coughs> I just want to mention, Laura and I heard from one of our dear friends who's one of the head nurses at St. Francis Hospital right in Port Washington. And what, what I heard was really, you know, I mean, obviously the, the outbreak or the, the infectious rate's been going up. But what she said is like, like a large majority of the people that are coming to the hospital aren't admitted because they tested positive and obviously they're concerned that it could be serious, but the, this, uh, you know, this variant right now is very contagious, but it really hasn't been causing a lot of hospitalizations. Now, obviously we've got a number of people in here like Chris and so forth where they, they it's not looking good, but we're praying for them, but we have to take solace in the fact that, that, um, this outbreak hasn't been as serious as previous ones have. Now, having right. said that, though, or I really want to lift up uh, your friend, your friend Diane, and and the two teens. So, Father God, I just want to lift up uh, our sister Aura's good dear friend uh, Diane, as well as the two teens who have tested positive for COVID with the Omicron variant. And and Father, I just pray that their their case would be mild that they wouldn't get sick, that they'd be able to enjoy Christmas. And Father, most importantly, that they would be healthy and be kept out of harm's way. And dear God, I also want to pray for everyone that uh, has loved ones that um, has, uh, you know, has contacted this and, 
and tested positive. And I pray the same for each and every one of them, Father, that they would be, uh, you know, kept from the worst of, of this, uh, you know, of, of this virus and that they would be safe and healthy during Christmas and throughout the new year. Again, Father, I just pray uh, for Diane and her two teens in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Laura says, I agree, Joe. Diane also works at, at Glencoe Hospital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Laura. Laura said, Joe, your eye is healing. I'm praying for you. <laughs> Joe, it does look a lot better today. Lots not if, better. Not if I get close up. <laughs> it's, it still looks a lot better than it did last yeah, week. Last no. week, your your eye was was bruised and stuff, and all that seems to have have gone away. So I got to tell yeah, I got to tell a quick story, Tommy. Laura actually uh, took a spill yesterday. Oh my goodness! And, and her eye is I don't, I don't mean to chuckle about this because it's absolutely not funny. She's okay, but it was scary when it happened, and she's black and blue around her eye. And I said, that's just what we need to do is go out and say, hey, we're fine as a couple, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm glad hers happened a week later. Otherwise, we'd be in trouble, you know? <laughs> that's funny. Woo! Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to lift both of you guys up in prayer, if that's okay. Thank you, brother. All right. Dear Father, we just lift up uh, Joe and Laura to you, dear Father, I, I pray that you uh, continue to heal them and um, and you um, help them to watch their steps, dear Father. <laughs> guide their steps through their home, and God, just uh, just keep them safe. We love them, and we don't want to see them uh, hurting or sick or 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 with stitches or bruises or anything like that, dear Father. So we just pray for their healing and their safety. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right, are we ready for the trivia? Yeah, I've already got it in. All right, what's our score? Uh, oh, gosh, where did it go? Hold on, I got it. We have several people on the board, I think. All right, hold on. Chris Klingen is in the lead with three. Chris Petrella has two. Karen has two. Mark Hendricks has two. And then we have a whole bunch on the board with one. Christine, Aura, Marianne, Michael, Eddie Hammond, and Leo. There you go. Awesome. Awesome. <clears throat> Where is Michael and Christine? I don't know. I haven't seen I their haven't names up there. Up there. <laughs> All right. Here's the question. Oh, welcome, Miriam. She just joined us. Hey, Miriam. Glad to have you with us. Here's the question. And I, and I will tell you, this is probably going to be a quick one. Because <laughs> I think uh, it, most of you will know this, especially if you were on here last week. Okay, here's the question. What brother of Jesus, other than James, that was the answer to last week's question. What brother of Jesus, other than James, also wrote a book in the New Testament? What brother of Jesus, other than James, also wrote a book in the New Testament? Oh, Chris Clayton. There's Chris Clayton. Clayton got it. It's Got Jude. It. <laughs> you paid good attention last week. There you go. Well, he's actually, Chris Klingon is actually the one when I asked the question last week. Um, ah. he's, he's the one that said, didn't, was it Jude also a brother of Jesus? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I completely forgot that. I, I knew that. It was just, <laughs> when I was coming up with a question, it, it completely job. slipped my mind. I lots was only thinking it, about James. Lots of you got it right. Good yep, job. Yep. There's Miriam saying hello. Leo got it right. Chris Petrella got it right. Lois got it right. Aura got it right. But Chris Klingon got it first. According to our screen. According to our screen. We have to go by our screen. Chris Klingon. So what does that give Chris Klingon now? That gives Chris Klingon four. 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 Uh-oh. That doubles the next closest person. Yep. So Chris Klingon's the, the target now. You got to keep that in mind. <laughs> hey guys, we do want to remind you that um, Friday night uh, we are doing a Christmas Eve service in house. It will also be broadcast. Um, so if you're not able to make it or you're more comfortable staying at home, 
we are hoping it's going to be broadcast. I will tell you, I am concerned about the quality because of the low lighting. So okay. don't depend on it to be broadcast, but it probably will. I'm just not sure you're going to see more than just a black screen. <laughs> Tammy has concern, but I have faith. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, but I'm um, nervous about it. I'm like very nervous about it. <laughs> well, no, matter, no matter what, we'll have audio. <laughs> uh, there you we'll go. Have audio. There we, you we'll, go. Well, we hope because we got to run it all the way through the church. So we're going to rewire all the cables and rerun all the cables tonight <coughs> to see if we can get it to work. So very good. Say prayer for us. <laughs> so, but that's at seven o'clock on on Friday night. Uh, we invite everybody to come out for that. I know it's a, it's a special time. Here at Glen Cove Christian Church, um, I was here obviously for the 2019 uh, Christmas Eve service. Last year we had it completely online, and so uh, this year we're going to be back in. We're going to be in house and online, so we're combining the best of both worlds, uh, right there. So, um, <laughs> Margie says I have faith in you, Tammy. Uh, so uh, I am a God lover. <laughs> It's funny. A lot of people say, oh, Tammy, you know all this tech stuff. I'm like, you have no idea how dumb I feel <laughs> trying to figure all this stuff out. <laughs> Did we have another prayer request up here a minute ago? Seemed like I saw another one. Uh, Mary and Mateo said, please pray for my aunt Narita. Family <laughs> is sick and my daughter Christina. Okay. We will definitely do that. Whose turn is it? Hey, it's yours, isn't it, Joe? Sure. I, um, I think so. I prayed for you and Laura. No, no, I I, I, absolutely it is. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Father God, I just want to lift up Miriam's aunt, Narita. Uh, th their family is sick. And I also want to lift up her daughter, Christina. Father, I just want to pray for, for their comfort and their healing, uh, especially during this Christmas time, Father. Uh, we've got a few days left into Christmas, and I just pray that they would be uh, feeling better, that they would uh, then remain healthy and and uh, be comforted by your embrace. Father, we pray this for Miriam and her loved ones. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. All right. Appreciate it, Joe. You bet. Hey, bro. listen, last week in our, um, in our discussion on why did people in the Old Testament live so long, uh, we talked about that quite a bit last week. Uh, but one of the questions that came up in the midst of that discussion was, did Abraham use a 360-day calendar? I did not know the answer to that. So I researched it this week, and the answer is probably yes. Probably yes, because especially with the Hebrews, the ancient Hebrew calendar was 12 months, each month 30 days, which comes up to 360, right? Did I do my math right? I don't know. I'm trying that's right. to I think yeah. I added the, I think I added this up. No, no, that's that's exactly right. Yeah. Comes up to 360. As you know, the rotation of the earth um um in in its in its completeness is uh 365 and a quarter. Okay? And so if they had a 360 day calendar, then obviously they would have more years than, than we would. However, let me say, not so much that it would, it would, that would be the only justification for them living to be seven and 800 years old. Okay. It's, it's still, I mean, you're looking at five, five days a year that they're gaining. So over the course of a year, somebody do the math. Of the course of 70 over, years. Over the course of a hundred years. It's 500 five, years. Well, five times, that's 500, right? Yes. Like two, two, so like two and a half years. Less than two years. Less than, right. or yeah, less than two years. So like a year and a little over a year and a half um, is what you're, uh, is what you're looking at. That, that is, you know, it would be gained. So what, what you're looking at is under that calendar, if somebody's a hundred years old under our calendar, they would be what? 98 yeah. and, and six months or, or seven or something like that. And so, yeah, they, they gained some years that way, but not, you know, not, not 500 years. 
Um, but that was a that was an interesting uh, study that I did with that. Uh, they used the, the Hebrews used a 360 day calendar up until about 700 BC. Okay, so that that's about 300 years before the end of the Old Testament. So the majority of the Old Testament was under a 360 day calendar. In, in around 700 BC, uh, they went to a 365 day calendar. But as you know, a, a legitimate year is 365.25, a quarter, okay? It wasn't until um, 238 BC that they included a leap year in there to make up for that, for that quarter. So that was, that was just some interesting stuff that I thought as, uh, as I was going through that. You got any you got any comments about that, Joe? That was it was a, as a yeah, new that's, study. That's that's an interesting study you got there. I, I haven't I haven't figured out yet why people live to seven hundred years. That's you know probably the diet was better. I don't know, but still five hundred years is a big that's a big gain with a healthy diet. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it was several factors: uh, the three hundred and sixty day calendar, the diet. Uh, especially the atmosphere before the flood. Um, we were more uh, genetically pure um, and, and probably had healthier bodies in general than we do now because we've had you know, generations of uh, body corruption has taken place over the years. Our environment is not near as healthy as it was then. So it's probably many, many different factors. Absolutely. Plus the fact that that we were originally created to last forever, okay? And so when, when Adam and Eve were cast out of the garden, um, you know, cutting down from eternally to 700 years, that's a significant cut, you know, <laughs> right there. <laughs> I mean, to us, we think 700 years, that's great. But to them, it's like eternity Oh, now we're only living 700 or 600 years. And so, um, <laughs> but, but we see that, uh, we see that continuing to get smaller throughout. And we even looked at, you know, during New Testament times that, uh, that the lifespan was, uh, the average lifespan was sometime in the forties. Yeah. So um, you got a question, Tammy? we have two questions. One, um, Aura wants to know who's Chris's Wi-Fi service provider. <laughs> Because hers is slow. Okay, so there you go. There's there you one. go, Chris Klingon. You can you can plug your Wi-Fi provider because go. of the because of the speed that that you show in answering these questions. And Bargy has a question. How many years did Adam and Eve live? All right, I got to look at up. Oh, Leo Dan looks like he might be answering that. Did he answer that? Their age of retirement was six hundred back in oh back in those days. I don't know that he's answering. Age that of age of retirement. Can you imagine that? Could you imagine having a uh, investment portfolio that you've invested in for like 550 years? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, and while you're looking that up, Aura also has a second question. Why was December 25th chosen for Jesus' birthday? The uh, research states that it was originally a pagan holiday. And um, yes, and we will get to that. You you are correct. So Chris Klingon says Verizon. <laughs> Verizon. <laughs> All right, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking to see. Adam lived a total of 930 years. Oh. 930 years years Adam lived. And the Bible says, here's the way the Bible words it. Altogether, Adam lived a total of 930 years and then he died. And then he died. <laughs> um, I don't know that it gives ease, does it? I would have to look into that. Tommy, it also says that they had 56 children. <laughs> wow. You would think that would diminish your life, right? Amen. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a lot of kids. <laughs> and they didn't have any aunt and uncles or grandparents to help them out. So imagine how that was. I know, right? Oh, that's funny. I 
even imagine. <laughs> Oh, what was uh, what was the other question? Why the twenty fifth. December fifth, twenty fifth, chosen for Jesus' birthday. <laughs> Research shows it was a pagan <clears throat> holiday. Is that correct? Um, yes, it is correct. Um, both um, Christmas, the the time of year, Christmas time and Easter were both pagan holidays uh, celebrated by the Roman Empire when the Roman Empire became Christian under Constantine, they they made a shift in, in what they celebrated and what they considered their, their holidays. So they become a Christian empire, Christian nation. They wanted the, no longer to have pagan holidays. They wanted to have Christian holidays. So they took the pagan holiday and they Christianized it. Okay. They put a Christian focus on it. And they did the same thing with, uh, with Easter as well. And so, yes, you are correct. They did begin as pagan holidays. Uh, one of the things we talked about back in October, oddly enough, um, Christmas and Easter were pagan holidays that were Christianized. And Halloween was a Christian holiday that was paganized. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, and that's the reason they chose the 25th. It's not because there was any research done to determine that Jesus was born on that day. Matter of fact, our best guess is that Jesus was probably born sometime in the spring, like sometime in April or something like that. Again, that's just, it's an educated guess um, on that. But, but most people who study that stuff are pretty confident that Jesus was not born on December 25th. But listen, I would assume Jesus would be like me in this. If you want to celebrate my birthday on another day, I'm perfectly fine with that. <laughs> okay? It does not have to be on January 21st. You can celebrate it June 25th, okay? And I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. And I'm I'm sure Jesus is as well. <clears throat> um Marianne says I've read that Jesus was born June 17th. Uh, there's probably some research on there. to. Yep, I've got that. And there's an Australian <coughs> stargazer named Dave Renecki. And he actually used complex computer software. And they actually charted the positions of all the celestial bodies. Um, they mapped the night sky as it would have appeared in the Holy Land 2,000 years ago, more than 2,000 years ago. And they did find that there was an unusually bright star. It would have looked as an as a unusually bright star. Um, when three of the planets lined up together, and it actually happened on June seventeenth of two BC, and so they're they're guessing that that might have been what the, the star that they saw. Again, this is all projected, all computer right. software. Yeah. So, see, I mean, those like I said, they're they're guesses, but they're educated guesses. They're not like pulling this stuff out of thin air. Yeah. There's yeah. reason behind uh, those guesses. And so, but I don't think anybody is guessing December 25th. No. That was no. purely because that was the, the time of the, of the pagan holiday of that time. And they just said, hey, let's just make this a celebration of Jesus's birthday. And, and listen, I don't necessarily think there's anything wrong with that. Um, as long as there's no carryover um, from the pagan holiday. But, um, you know, just to, just to focus, we use it as a time to focus in. Yes, it's, ma it's materialized and commercialized and all this stuff. And we, we do have to struggle with that. Um, but as far as, uh, you know, focusing on the birth of Jesus, I, I, December the 25th is as good a time as, as any. But listen, if you're not comfortable doing that and you want to do it, what is it, June 17th? By all means, do that. There's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that either. The point is, he came to Earth. Yes. Period. All right. So, or is asking. So, does that mean Christianity stems from paganism, or or was it who was in charge of that at that time? Um, Christianity did, did did not stem from from paganism. You might could say that loosely that Christmas stemmed from paganism in a sense, but not Christianity as a whole. Um, Christianity was already well established before a Christmas celebration 
came about. Um, we don't read anything in the Bible about them outside of the actual birth of Jesus that was celebrated, but we don't have any record in the new, in the new Testament of them celebrating that on an annual basis. No record at all. Uh, not in the, not in the new Testament, not in the early church between the new Testament and the establishment of the, of the, of the, um, you know, the Roman Catholic church, which loosely began when Rome made Christianity, the, uh, the, um, the national religion of Rome. And so, um, so, so the answer to the question specifically, does that mean Christianity stemmed from paganism? No, Christianity came purely out of Jesus. Okay. And what he taught and the example that he lived and the followers that he had, what they wrote in the new Testament and, and, and influence those that were after the New Testament and carried that on. You could say that possibly about Christmas. Well, and is stemmed it, from paganism. Doesn't Halloween go the other way? <laughs> Halloween, Halloween goes Halloween the other way. It's pagan and it stems from Christianity. It stems from Christianity. It was a um just as just as a reminder, back in October we talked a little bit about this, but um November the first was a celebrated day in, in the Roman Catholic Church, known as All Saints Day, okay, and, and they called it a a a holy day, um, and so the day before November the first, and listen, some of the things that they did, they would dress up as some of the saints and and kind of celebrate them in that. See, we still do that in Halloween. We dress up. Maybe not as past saints, but we dress up as, as other characters. Uh, and so there are some of those practices that was practiced with All Saints Day or All, or All Holy Day um, that, um, that still carried over to, to Halloween. The day before All Saints Day or the All Holy Day was October 31st, which what's the day before Christmas? It's Christmas Eve. What's the day before the Holy Day? It's Holy Eve or hollow was, was another word for, for holy. And so it became Hallow's Eve, Hallow's Eve, which eventually developed into Halloween. Okay. And it was, it was taken by different pagan traditions and stuff. And they said, okay, if, if Christianity has their holy day, well, we're going to have our holy day. And they just decided to make it the day before the Christian's holy day. And that's how October 31st um, originally became um, Halloween. So Halloween was a Christian holiday that was paganized. Christmas and Easter was a pagan holiday that was Christianized. There you go. There you go. Um, Aura says it seems a bit political how that date was chosen. Listen, that date was chosen 100% by the... Uh, by the the Roman government, it was. Um, I don't know that it gave anybody any political clout or political advantage in that sense, being political. Um, but it was uh, determined because it was just it was already a holiday, and since they became a Christian nation, they wanted to keep the holiday, but they wanted to do away with the pagan part of it, and so they kept the date and just. Um, Turn it into a celebration of the birth of Jesus. So, fun stuff. Absolutely. Hey, another question that we had in our discussion last week was uh, Chris Klingen brought up a, a, a point and an article um, saying, was 120 years, because remember when we looked at that passage of scripture, it's in Genesis 6, 3, where it said, that God said that because, because of the evilness of man, basically, he was going to reduce their time to 120 years. Let me, let me actually read that because I don't want to misquote that because the wording of it is important in this discussion. So Genesis 6, 3 says, Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with humans forever. For they are mortal. Their days will be a hundred and twenty years. <clears throat> a lot of people look at that as 
okay, the days of man or humankind will be reduced to 120 years. And we do see a gradual progression of that happening, that it does come down to around 120 years eventually. It's, it's more general than it is specific, because even today we still have some people live to be 123, 122, something like that. But it's pretty close. It's pretty close. And um, and then obviously our, our national average is, what, 78 something, I think somebody determined last week. And so it's a, it's 120 or, or less. 120 is about that max. Um, one of the things that, that Chris brought up was that the 120 years could be referring to not the lifespan of man, but the time from when God spoke that until the flood, that it would be 120 years until the flood came. And after researching that, let me just say, that is very possible. It is very possible. And, and a lot of people um, seem to believe that. Uh, most of the ones that I read said it could be one or the other. Um, both of them have, have enough legitimacy to their argument to say, oh, it could be this one or, or it could be that one. Um, and, and so it very well could have. And even in my uh, chronological Bible, again, these are guesses, but they're educated guesses. In the chronological Bible, it actually gives years. As you, as you look at certain sections of Scripture, it gives you specific years or at least you know a span of, of years. And according to the chronological Bible, it is 120 years <clears throat> from when God spoke that until the flood. Now, here is the confusing thing about it. In Genesis chapter 5, verse 37, or verse 32, excuse me, it says, after Noah was 500 years old, he became the father of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And then it goes into chapter 6, and three verses into chapter 6, it talks about this 120 years thing. Some people believe that, that applies to when the flood would come. However, Noah was 600 years old when the flood came. So, in, in Genesis 5.32, Noah is 500 years old. At the time of the flood, later on in chapter 6, he is 600 years old. That would only be 100 years. Some people use that argument to say that it's not applying to that, that it's applying to our lifespans. However, let me say, this is a weird thing about the Bible, and, and it's hard to just say, okay, look at that, that's obvious. So, sometimes you got to dig, okay? Um, and, and as you dig, you will find out that the Bible is not always written in exact chronological order. Okay, sometimes, and listen, we will do this sometimes. You're telling a, a story, and, and you know, you get you're telling a story from point A to say point E, and you get to point D, and you kind of refer back to point C <clears throat> before you continue on to the end. The Bible often does this, okay, especially in the Old Testament. It'd be telling a story, and then it gets into these how long each person lived and how old they were when they had kids and all this stuff, and it tells that. And then it goes back to telling the story, the narrative, which very well may be what happened here, okay, that they're saying, okay, Noah, or yeah, Noah, um, when he was 500 years old, had his, had his, his three kids. And then in chapter six, it goes back into the narrative, which is back before Noah had his kids and, and telling this. So there's argument for either side on that. Either one uh, could be very, very possible in that. There's Christine. Christine, we've missed you. I know. I told her, her and, and Michael, I was like, where the heck are they? Missing them. And, and between her and um, Mark Hendricks not <coughs> being on tonight. It's quieter than I know. Usual. I know. So. You say, hey. 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 Hey, let me ask a quick question. We're, we're about out of time here. I do have one more question, but we may hold that for another time. 
But I want to ask this, and it, it's not a dig in apologetic type thing. Uh, it's this. We asked this a similar question last year at this time. This is the the Wednesday before Christmas, right? Um, Friday is Christmas Eve. Tomorrow is Christmas, Adam, um, because Adam be came be before Eve. We talked about that at the beginning <laughs> of the show. And, uh, of course, if you continue along that logic, then, you know, on the 26th would be Christmas Cane. Oh, my goodness. And then. Uh, oh, my goodness. And then the 27th would be Christmas Abel, right? Oh, my goodness. So we got Christmas Adam, Christmas Eve, Christmas, Christmas Cain, and Christmas Abel. It's just a whole celebration. Oh, my. Um, uh, Chris Klingen said that was explained very well, Tommy. Uh, Chris, I appreciate that. Thank Miriam you. Miriam said, thank you, Joe, for the tickets. She's referring to the um, the thing on Sunday, the the Preacher of the Year Award yes. banquet. Uh, awesome. the, the tickets that you left for Miriam, uh, she won. She, she won did. She did. Yep. She won a basket. <laughs> So don't be eating that that those candies in there. If that was a basket for me, no. oh, I want a basket too. But mine didn't have any candy in it. It had no. a workout program in it. That is. <laughs> I don't think that's even fair, but okay. And by, by the way, Tommy and, and Tammy, that was an amazing um, an an event that yes, was put was. together. Uh, Le Leah did a great job. You know, yeah. and it was obviously yeah. wonderful, Tommy, to be there to celebrate, you know, your award. And and I'll tell you, it was the entertainment was amazing. I was telling Laura yes. there was yeah. a, a ballet, a ballerina in a ballet, you know, I think they did the nutcracker suite and they, someone did yep. a tango, and then that group that kind of wrapped things up with the drums and the oh man. It was spectacular. Yes, yep. it was. Yeah. Yep. So we had a great time and it was a great cause and a great fundraiser as well. And we're just really proud of Leah, who's the president of that organization. Yes. And a member of our church. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You know, it might be a good idea the uh, the Wednesday before that event next year, having her on the show. Oh, that would be good. That's a great idea. Yep. Yep. It was a really Excellent. good time. Um, getting getting a few congratulations here. Yeah. Uh, guys, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, but as I as I shared uh, at the event that day, uh, listen, I get I get the award, but it was it, it's not a, a single effort by no stretch of the imagination. What we've been through over the past year and a half, two years, um, it has been a team effort. Um Joe and I have worked great together. Um, Tammy and I have, have worked great together, the three of us. And, and Allie um, put in extra time and effort during that time as well to be able to pull things together. Our leadership team, uh, guys, you don't know the, the sweat and, and pain that we went through in making decisions and, and using as our guide to be as wise and as safe and as loving as we possibly could. Uh, that is the desire of all of our hearts. And listen, you guys as a congregation, uh, you came together. You continued to serve. You continued to give. Uh, you made videos so that we could have those available for our online services and stuff like that. Listen, this was not about Tommy Lanham. This was about Glen Cove Christian Church working together to do what needed to be done in the moment. Even when we didn't know what to do, we did something <laughs> in order to um, uh, just continue to move forward. And we're a church on the move, right? We've talked about that. Amen. And no Amen. COVID is going to stop us. <laughs> it might cause us to take some detours here and there, and it might even slow us down from time to time, but it's not going to stop us. We are a church on the move, and we will continue to move forward as long as we stick together as a church. So I thank you guys. I congratulate you guys, all of you, um, because this is a, it's not a, it's not a pastor of the year award. It's a church of the year award. As far as I'm concerned. Amen, brother. Um, all right. I was going to ask, you know, what, what do you, what do you, how do you celebrate Christmas or what do you, what helps you stay focused on Jesus at Christmas? I, I still remember Christine's, um, answer from last year. When she says she puts up nativity scenes in all the rooms in her house, and when she walks by, she goes, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, whatever it is, it keeps you focused 
on there. And so, you know, in the last couple of minutes we have here, if you have time, maybe put that up uh, in the box. I so. will show you. I do not have um, any video, but I do have some a, a photograph that somebody there took of us and sent to me. Awesome. So, uh, but we, oh, man. All right, hold on, Joe. I might hide you. That's okay. Oh, hold on. I think we can still hear you. Can you see? All right. First, first of all, you got to notice the coat. I need to get it. I needed to get um, close up on, on the shoes. This is the first time I'd ever seen my husband in a bow tie. And <laughs> and then he's got these sparkly shoes that match that jacket. He looked absolutely amazing that night. So I just had to show that off because, you know, you're pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's Christine going, hey. hey. <laughs> She's still talking to her mangers throughout the house. There you go. Margie <laughs> says, amen. Thanks for all you guys do. Margie, uh, we appreciate that. And um, absolutely. And let's you guys, you guys keep us going. All right. You all are very encouraging and, and loving and supportive. And, uh, and listen, uh, a lot of what we do, it wouldn't get done without that because that it helps to fuel us. So thank you guys. <laughs> What is it? And Marianne said, Tommy, it's not scaling back the fish. What? Oh! <laughs> the joke she yes. made. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. I was asking I was asking them if they do this the the feast of the seven fish uh the other day because I had never heard of that till I came to Long Island. And so I asked them if they did the feast of the seven fish. And she said she said, Yes, but we're scaling back this year. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! And I, I laughed for like ten minutes over that because yeah, you know that's next, my for the next few days. You that's kept it that's up. my type of humor right there. Oh. Um, Aura says, "You guys rock." Aura, we appreciate that. Listen, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah. We we Joe and I and 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 Tammy and Allie, we get to work with like the best church in the world, and so uh, we love you guys. Joe, we got just a little over two minutes, my friend. You got any last words for us? No, I just want to, you know, take a moment to thank everyone for joining us. And Tommy, you've said this, we've and we've talked about it. It's an incredible blessing to come on here every week and and be together with uh, with so many of you. And it's such an honor to pray for you and uh, talk about you know what's important to you and questions and so forth. But really, I just want to take a moment and wish each and every one of you guys a uh, uh, happy and merry, and most importantly, is a blessed Christmas. Uh, hope you guys can join us um, in the building on, on Friday night. But if you can't, please join us uh, online. We're going to try to get that live. Um, but we love you guys. And then one last final note, whether you're with us on Christmas Eve or not, this coming Sunday, we're only going to have one service, and it's going to be at 11 a.m. So make note of that. Um, Service on, uh, I guess that is the 26th. Yes. The 26th. That'll be at 11 a.m. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and guys, we really, we really do. We understand some people are, are kind of leery, especially as, as things uh, seem to be taking another turn for the worse. Listen, I do not believe it's going to get as bad as it was. I believe that wholeheartedly. And listen, even the experts are saying that they said, be cautious because it is, it is dangerous right now, but it's nothing like it was in March of 2020. And so, so uh, rest assured that even the experts are, are, are giving us, you know, um, encouragement. encouragement in that. So uh, listen, we'd love to have you with us on Friday night. Um, but if you can't be in the building, at least join us online as we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Um, we encourage you to be with us Sunday morning if you can. Like Joe said, it's only going to be at 11 o'clock. We're going to be doing a wrap up of the theme for the year, which was do something. Okay. We're going to be wrapping that up, touching on some of the high points uh, throughout the year. And, uh, and, and we're just going to have a good time as we close that out. But we're also going to reveal what our theme for 2022 will be. Okay. So we're not going to say that here. you got to be there sat or Sunday. Uh, to be able to, to experience that. So we, we look forward to seeing you guys. God bless you guys. We appreciate you. And most of all, have a merry, merry Christmas. Love you guys. 
thank you for joining